Good morning. Welcome back to Planet Doug. And uh, set the stage. It's about, it's just after four o'clock in the morning. And I'm here in the city that I call Canto. But I think the local pronunciation is uh, considerably different than that. It's more like Canto or something like that. And uh, one of the main attractions here, of course, for visitors is to go to the floating market. And uh, that's where I'm going right now. Uh, the dock where I get on the boat to go to the floating market is about two kilometers away. It's sort of downtown. My hotel, the Mekong Rose, is a little bit away from the, uh, the riverfront area. And of course, I could take a grab or something like that, but a couple of kilometers is no big deal. And I figure I'll, I'll walk there and it'll give me time to wake up by the time I get there. <laughs> so here I am on my way to the docks, get on a boat to head to the uh, floating market. Welcome to the Blue Dot. The Blue Dot is a segment where I give some context for the video using Google Maps. And this video, of course, takes place in the country of Vietnam. So just for a quick refresher, let's start there. This is the country of Vietnam right here, a very long, narrow country with this long coastline. To the west, you've got Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, and Myanmar. If you head south from Vietnam, you're going to find Malaysia and Indonesia. And if you head east, of course, you're going to go across the South China Sea until you hit the Philippines. So coming back here to Vietnam, you've got the capital city of Hanoi in the north and way down here in the south, the bustling metropolis of Ho Chi Minh City. And this video takes place in a city called Can Thu. Can Thu is down here in the Mekong River Delta, which is south of Ho Chi Minh City. So this region right here is the Mekong River Delta. As you can see, it's southwest of Ho Chi Minh City and it's made up of a complex network of large river systems. And the city of Canto, where I am in this video, is located right here. And the floating market that I go to is actually on the Canto River. The city of Canto lies on this very large river system here called the Hao River. This orange area, this is the center of Canto City. And the downtown core is essentially right here in this area alongside the uh, Canto River. And the floating market is upriver on the Canto River. If you follow my mouse pointer, you can see right up here, this spot is the floating market. And when you go to Canto to see the floating market, you generally start down here on the shore, hop on a boat, and then the boat takes you up this river until you get here. It's about six or seven kilometers uh, this trip. When I was staying in Canto, I, was, I had a room here at the Mekong Rose Hotel. And very early in the morning, it was about four o'clock in the morning as this video starts, I made my way from the Mekong Rose Hotel and went along here to this major road I was on foot and I walked down here following the major roads and made my way along here to the dock area. And this is where I got on the boat to uh, take me to the floating market. And once I was on the boat, the boat went along the curves of the Canto River underneath a series of quite beautiful bridges until we finally got to the floating market located right here. And when you sign up for one of these boat tours to the floating market, um, it usually comes with visits to other attractions. You might visit a rice paper manufacturing center uh, or maybe some farms in the area. The boat might take you up some of these local rivers to visit a few other sites. And when the tour was over, I was back on a boat and then the boat took me back along the Canto River all the way back to the dock here where I was originally picked up. And then from here, I walked on foot back to my hotel again. 
So that gives a little bit of context to how I went to the uh, floating market and where it's located in Vietnam. And now, back to the video. Yeah, it's an interesting world, of, of course, this time in the morning. You might think 4 a.m. There, there would be nothing going on, and perhaps if you were in Canada, you would be largely right. But in a place like Vietnam, 4 a.m., man, it's active. Uh, early in the morning, there's already a lot going on. I passed all these little cafes at the side of the road already near my hotel, filled with men having a morning tea, morning coffee before the day begins. You can see there's uh, quite a bit of scooter traffic already on the road. Yeah, things uh, happen early in the morning around here. Kanta is a, a city of rivers, of course, because it's located in the Mekong River Delta. And this whole region is a flatland, a river delta. And uh, many, many rivers, large and small. And I'm, uh, like maybe you can't even see it, but I'm crossing over one right now. And uh, normally there'd be lights on everywhere, but right now all the lights are off. You can see a little bit of the river, perhaps, in that direction, with some lights along the side. But that's not the river we're going on. We're heading towards the Kanto River, which is uh, that direction. And as is often the case, oh, for Pete's sake, that's appropriate because I was going to say that, uh, as is often the case on Planet Doug, the day started with a bang. I was concentrating so much on where I was going, what I was doing, the timing of it, getting camera gear ready. I wasn't really focused on the real world as yet, the physical world, and I fell down the stairs. My, my room was up on the third, well, it's the second floor, but it's the third floor technically at my hotel, and I'm walking down the stairs, and it kind of curves, does a little bit of a, some, uh, sharp curves going down the stairs and I misjudged a step and I went flying. The fact that I don't have a broken arm or a broken leg or a broken neck right now is a kind of a miracle. But yeah, I hit everything on the way down. I hit this wrist, it's really sore. Hit my knees, hit my ankles. <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh, I hit my feet. My feet actually hurt right now because I slammed them on the top of the steps. Yeah, I went down hard, but uh, I had my priorities straight and I sacrificed my body in order to protect the camera. <laughs> I've, uh, I've done similar things in, over the last few years and um, I've realized there's a human instinct that when you're falling, you let go of everything because you're trying to brace, you're, you're trying to brace yourself for the impact with your hands and the instinct is just to take whatever's in your hands and just send it flying. And I've done that in the past where I've smashed a camera because of that. So I've sort of uh, been developing this instinct to train myself to ignore that instinct and just hold on to the camera. So I sacrificed my body to an extent and saved my GoPro. <laughs> so yeah, I did not smash my camera. Yeah, but over here, all this activity. 4 o'clock in the morning. It's amazing. Got to wonder what time do they go to bed if they're up this early. They're all, their market stalls, their food is ready to go. Yeah, it's really quite something. So, floating market. I don't know a huge amount about it. I probably know as much as the next casual tourist in Vietnam. I know that uh, where it is now, I don't think it was the original location because originally it was a real market, of course. And I read, I read a couple articles about it and this, it dates back to the time when there were very few roads here. Uh, all traffic and transportation was all done on the network of rivers and canals and streams, things like that. So floating markets just naturally evolved. They made sense. People would come from their villages, float down the river 
to a point where some rivers would intersect and there would be market sellers out on the water with their boats selling things and all the transactions would take place on boats. And then of course, whenever people are at markets buying their produce for the week or buying rice, whatever it is they're doing, they also need a cup of tea, cup of coffee, some noodles, they need breakfast and all these other people would be selling food and drinks and a, a, a floating market would be born. And um, I read that this market used to be at a spot where six rivers converged. So it was a very busy spot in the river system. And then it moved to its present location at some point in its history. And now, of course, the road network here has developed very rapidly and uh, floating markets are not as common as they used to be. They're not part of normal life, I don't think. So this floating market is now more a tour, it's a tourist attraction more than anything else. It's not, uh, oh, just walk through a spider web. Yes, I'm heading in the right direction. A river is right up ahead. Yeah, behind me again, you see all these uh, young guys, you know, <laughs> young, young guys that age back in Canada would definitely still be sleeping, but they're all out here at uh, 4.30 in the morning having a cup of coffee at the side of the street. So, uh, yeah. By the way, it's a Sunday today, and I was told that Sunday is going to be the busiest day for the uh, floating market. And yeah, I didn't mind that because, as I said, it's, it's a tourist experience now. There's, there's no getting around that. So rather than fighting it, just lean into it. You might as well go on the busiest day when there's dozens of tourist boats going, or I don't know how many go. Because yeah, you can see this bus over here. All these people getting off. They're all uh, heading towards the floating market, I'm sure. For me, that's a part of the experience, again. I love uh, the way things are organized, and yeah, check this out. I'll just put the camera over here as I walk along. You can sort of see what's off to my, off to my right. Just, uh, yeah, so busy. So many people already awake and living their lives. And these could be uh, tourists as well. Yeah, look at that. This alleyway too. And uh, I'm moving a little bit faster than I normally do because I yeah, I was running a bit later this morning and then doing things like falling down the stairs delayed me. But yeah, look how busy this is. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? And uh, oh, bus right behind me, another tour bus. So yeah, all of this is kind of spur of the moment, not organized at all. I'm uh, hoping I'll even be able to recognize the place where I bought my ticket. I think I have an idea where it is. It's just up ahead here. Anyway, at least I found um, my place. This is where I bought my ticket, right here. And um, yeah, again, this is the company, but I have no idea what company it is or uh, anything like that but this is a uh, yeah oh yeah there's their uh, name card i think so that's who i'm going with and it's probably meant for vietnamese i'm not going to get an english guide or anything like that so there's the river and i think those are my boats one of those boats is mine i don't know which one yet i uh i went to the ticket counter and a young guy, I don't know if it's the same guy who sold me the ticket. He, uh, he took my ticket and then uh, I came back here to the bathrooms. <laughs> it was quite a journey just getting back here because it's so dark. He had to turn all the lights on for me. But I found the bathroom and now um, hopefully they will guide me to my boat. Yeah, so this is the place. And I guess if you came early enough, you could have a, 
a drink of some kind. Oh, just wait? Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right. So, um, he just indicated just to hang out here. Just wait here and then he'll come get me when uh, my boat is ready. <laughs> yeah. So, I think we have some sort of a gizmo here that... Uh, I thought it might be blowing cold air, but it's not. So, no point sitting there. Yeah, I walked uh, pretty fast to get here, so uh, I'm a little bit hot and sweaty. While waiting, I just came down to the, the dock area where all this boat activity was taking place. And uh, just I just recognized it. When I first came to Kanto, I walked from the best bus station following the river, and then I ended up crossing the river on this vehicle ferry right here. I didn't know I was at that particular dock, but here's the uh, vehicle ferry. Yeah, guess it runs uh, all day. Well, starting very early in the morning anyway. There were still earlier then five in the morning and the ferry's already running. It's good to know. And down here, th this might be one of my boats. Maybe we're waiting for a bus to show up, but look at all the boats on the river. I don't know if you can see them, but I can see them with my eyes, all tourist boats. You always know it's a tourist boat because of all the orange life jackets that are visible. A small group has also shown up, but they're sitting at a table at the front. Yeah, I'm curious to see whether a big bus suddenly arrives. I have no idea whether this company is a big tour company, a very tiny one. I have no idea the scale. But they have three young guys here wearing the company uh, uniform right now. So they have three staff right here, right now. Skies are starting to lighten. You can see all the boats leaving, heading towards the uh, market. I still have no idea what's going on with uh, my company or my boat. It's about quarter after five now, but there's been no movement or uh, motion of any kind. Look at that, what a scene. It's like the, uh, the Indy 500. Look at the size of the boats going to the market too. They're a lot larger than I expected, but maybe on Sundays with more people, the big, bigger boats come out. Oh. So the adventure uh, continues. Um, yeah, the, the <laughs> ticket I had was for a boat at 5 a.m. And everything in Vietnam so far for me has been extremely punctual, like very, very organized. In fact, all my buses have left early. So I really, I made sure to come down here and get here like way before 5 a.m. But um, yeah, I've been waiting until past 5.30, but there was no movement, there was no action, no boats, nothing going on. And then now, for some reason, they, uh, they called up a scooter for me. And the scooter is, uh, I don't know where I'm going. He's driving me somewhere else. So I guess it's one of these uh, situations where uh, various uh, ticket agents sell you tickets on different boats run by other companies. It's all very interwoven, you know? All right. Okay. Thank you. Hello. So apparently uh, my boat is over here. Yeah, you'll never know for sure what's going on.
Ở đây người người đi đi qua đây. Đi ra vô găng hỏi Here comes a boat, and they sort of told me to come down here, but I don't know who's connected with my boat, who isn't. People seem to know who I am, but I don't know who uh, any of them are. At the uh, first place where I was, they took my ticket, so I don't even have a, a ticket anymore. So I hope uh, I'm where I'm supposed to be, but I don't really know who to uh, talk to or... That's it? Okay. So this uh, guy came up to talk to me. Says I have to go somewhere else apparently, but I don't know where. Yeah. So the... Uh, Adventure continues. This other guy came and grabbed us. So I guess this is a boat central. All, uh, all paths seem to lead here. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Where it? Okay. So apparently, this is uh, our boat. So yeah, the people running this boat have a different uh, t-shirt, like different uniforms, different company name. <laughs> so yeah, here we are, here's a, a boat. Well, um, among many. I was just saying that for a lot of these experiences, I get a lot more out of them if I do them two times. Because the first time I do something like this, it's just total chaos and confusion. And like 90% of my brain is, is focused on the logistics, the timing, what's happening. As I said, I was told the boat was leaving at five and I assumed the boat was leaving. From there, that's where I bought the ticket. That's where the company is. They said I had to come there at five o'clock. Well, they told me to get there at 20 to five to get ready to get on the boat at five. So I was got there at 20 to five, but I'm still sitting there at 540 and there's no movement. There's no activity, right? Yep. And um, yeah, they want me to put on a uh, life jacket. And uh, yeah, so I'm sitting there wondering wh what's going on. Uh, is there a boat? Uh, what? Maybe there. The maybe I accidentally got the 7 a.m. boat rather than the 5 a.m. And I, I can't really wait. I didn't want to wait for an hour and a half until the 7 a.m. And anyway, I finally asked the guy using Google Translate, "What time is it, like when is the boat leaving?" And then um, he didn't seem to know. So I just had to sit and wait a lot longer and then suddenly there's a guy there with a scooter and they say, oh, hop on the scooter. We're gonna take you somewhere. And they took me to that dock. <laughs> and then I walk all the way down to the dock. I don't know why I'm there. I don't know who I'm talking to. And I'm standing at the dock as all these boats are leaving, piling, leaving, getting people getting on, people leaving, boats leaving. And then finally another guy comes up and says, oh, come with me, come with me. And he takes me off that dock brings me to another ticket counter. I stand there for a long time. And then at that ticket counter, another guy in a blue shirt comes up and says, okay, come with us, brings me here. And he has to talk to all these people. And then they finally put me on this boat. So, and I don't know where we're going. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> That's just the way it is, right? But now that I know the system, I could do this again and it would be much more relaxing and I could just enjoy the experience rather than spending so much energy thinking about the uh, logistics, right? So anyway, but I guess we wait here until the boat fills up now. So uh, yeah, those seats are taken.
but um, yeah, the rest of the boat is uh, still, yeah, largely empty. All right, we're on, we're underway. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, these guys are all in uh, purple shirts. Exactly uh, what company I've, I've been fobbed off onto, I have no idea. But there's the dock. I was sort of hoping I'd be going on a boat like this one over here, because those were the boats that were at my, um, at my pier where I bought my ticket. But it doesn't really matter what, uh, what kind of a boat you're on. These ones are, this one is probably a lot faster. But to be honest, this is what I signed up for. I just wanted to get on a boat on the river. So if I'm on a boat on the river, I'm pretty happy. Tàu du lịch tư an như thế này thì mình cần cứ liên hệ các bạn ở đây hỗ trợ mình hết nha. Dạ rồi thì đây đó. Dạ. Sáng nay trên tàu mình gia đình mình có ai đi chợ nổi lần nào chưa ta? Dạ. Đi rồi hả? Có ai? À, dạ chưa luôn. Dạ có số anh chị đi rồi. Có số anh chị chưa đi chợ nổi lần nào ha? Dạ rồi nếu mà anh chị nào mình chưa đi chợ nổi đó thì thời gian mà để gia đình mình khởi hành từ bến đến kiều mà di chuyển vào trong chợ nổi cái tăng như thế này thì mình mất tầm khoảng từ 20 đến 30 phút để di chuyển nha. Yeah. So yeah, we're right. on our way, yeah. as you can see, and uh, just heading underneath one of the bridges here in uh, Capto. And the tour, as you can hear, is uh, in Vietnamese, of course, and that's fine with me.
So we've reached uh, the bridge, and right on the other side of this bridge is the, the site of the floating market itself. And it looks like all the boats uh, stop here, uh, slow down so everybody can do what I'm about to do, get some video or take a photo of the sign on the bridge for the floating market. To sort of, um, yeah, say that you were here. You can see all the boats have slowed down here. And then, uh, People can go to the front of the boat and have their picture taken on the bow. So I think we, we are in the heart of the uh, floating market, but as I suspected, there isn't really a market here anymore. We are the market. So all the boats here are tour boats, just like mine, as you can see. And uh, I don't know if you can hear me, the, uh, the tour guide is very loud, but maybe you can hear my voice. Yeah, 
Dạ, thị xíu mỹ nữ đó là mỹ nữ như thế nào đó Thị xíu nên chia sẻ cho gia đình mình luôn, đặc biệt mỹ nữ trong giờ nổi đó Theo Dạ, đúng không? Nãy giờ thấy những cái ghe nước uống chưa? Và những cái ghe trái cây nè, và những cái ghe đồ ăn thức uống một tí cũng đi lên ngay đầu đó Là họ bán nhưng mà không có treo Dạ rồi, điều bất thường thứ hai nữa Giờ ngược lại, giờ treo mà không có bán Dạ, giờ treo mà không có bán là lại gì? Nãy giờ thấy gì chưa? Dạ Bây giờ anh Kiều có ai để ý phía sau lái những cái tàu của cô chú Thương Hồ không? Họ treo nhưng mà không có bán nha Dạ, rồi đây gia đình mình có thể chưa thấy đó Bởi vì cái lượng gia tàu của chú Thương Hồ sẽ ngay đầu phía dưới như thế cũng gặp được tí lệ ăn sáng Thì phía mình nhận được đó, cho nên là em không thấy được hình ảnh cái bạn đó So there it is, the uh, floating market On a Sunday morning, on a busy Sunday morning Dạ, và nằm ở phía bên trong luôn Dạ a few of these boats, the small ones, they're selling fruit, of course. They go up to the boats. So, okay, these are the ones with um, noodles and coffee, things like that. Oh, I see how that works. So it looks like um, some of the boats, they dock beside market boats out there and then you can get your bowl of noodles from one of the boats that pull up beside you or you, I, think the, I think the noodle boats are fixed in place. I thought you park your boat and the noodle boats come to you but it's the other way around I think. The noodle boats are fixed in place and the big boats pull up beside them. Everybody gets their noodles and then they leave and then another tour boat comes in. But my tour boat doesn't do that. They brought us to the dock and this is the, um, the little restaurant here. You can get noodles if you want or something to drink. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I seem to be, <laughs> I don't know what tour company I'm with. I have no idea. Or maybe that maybe it's all just one giant company. Mine seemed to have purple shirts, though uh, the guys who sold me the ticket had different colored shirts. That's the only way I can uh, keep them apart. But yeah, they all seem to have the same names, like Tu An. Yeah, it's quite a variety of boats, though. It's like almost a houseboat over there. Maybe that's part of the dock. And over there, you can just see all the activity. Whew, all right, here we are. <laughs> the floating market. If we were like docked with a boat or something, having a noodle boat experience, I'd probably end up having some noodles, but I'm uh, kind of hot and sweaty and I don't really feel like I have to have noodles here. I can have noodles anywhere. This is just a normal restaurant at, at the river shore, you know? We'll see, depends how long we're here. I just want to uh, watch all the boat traffic instead. That's what I'm more interested in. So here again, yeah, this small boat out there is getting a riverside service, getting noodles out there. So I guess you, you can arrange that if you hire a smaller boat. I think what I ended up doing was pretty much the cheapest option available. Uh, 100,000 dong for one person. And I guess for that price, this is, a, this is the, uh, the experience that you get. Quite interesting, I'm enjoying myself a lot. But I think if you want, well of course if you want an English speaking guide and perhaps an experience like this, getting noodles out on the water then uh, you have to pay a bit more for that yeah one interesting thing I've done a few of these uh, tours now in um, in Vietnam just a couple but one thing about them is they really try to give good value for money Almost too much sometimes. Whoa. <laughs> so chaotic. 
Um, just waiting for this boat to go by. We've got a pretty loud engine. Like for example, the, uh, the tour guide on the buses and on the boat, they talk non-stop. Just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, whether in English or Vietnamese. And from my point of view, I would prefer them not to talk at all. It's almost impossible to enjoy the boat ride with that noise in your ear all the time. Like she never stopped talking the entire boat ride. And the speakers are so loud, I couldn't even hear myself think. But on the positive side, you know, they're, uh, they're giving, as I said, good value for money. So I assume she was giving a lot of information about the river, the history of the market, the lives of the people. And if you could understand what she's saying, maybe it was quite interesting, but it is a lot of, a lot of noise and I never got even a minute to gather my thoughts in any way or just to enjoy the river. It was a bit, a bit much for me, a bit overwhelming, all of the, uh, the, the talking. <laughs> so this is what I was interested in, my lovely uh, tour guides. They helped me get an iced coffee, milk coffee, and uh, I've already had it. So there's the scene at the uh, floating market about uh, it's about 6.30 in the morning right now. To me it feels like it's uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon in terms of the activity level and everything like that. Yeah. Are you So I made, I made arrangements to go back on a different boat. It was very easy to do. I just asked the tour guides if I could do it because the, the, I guess my, my ticket allows me to go on a, there's a more tour, but I don't really know where they're going. And, uh, and um, hmm. Here's one of the uh, floating uh, food and drinks boats. That's very cool. Oh, this activity is pretty crazy, all this boat traffic. Got one boat here right in front of me that is unloading some produce. So it's a real working boat. So we're just leaving now from the uh, floating market. As I said, I decided to uh, cut the tour short. I just wanted to go up the river on the boat, see the floating market, and I uh, didn't really need to go to the uh, agricultural centers. Or The tour could be two or three hours longer, and of course it's all going to be in Vietnamese. And I wouldn't understand what they were talking about or where we were going or for how long or even how we're going to get anywhere. So I just asked the tour guides if I could hop on a different boat and just go back. And they said, oh, that's absolutely fine. They had to make a couple of phone calls or talk to a boat captain. And then they, uh, yeah, they put me on this boat right here. My, uh, my boat for the return journey. We just did a U-turn for some reason. We just went out and did a loop. Now we're coming back to the beginning. But I don't know why. So yeah, this is the uh, the restaurant. This is where we were docked. But as far as I know, this boat is going back to uh, Kanto.
<laughs> what a scene. It's, it's crazy. It's really interesting though. Yeah, I don't know what they're trying to do with the boat. We've gone around in a loop and now we seem to be, maybe there's a traffic control. They're waiting. It's almost like taking off from an airport. We have to wait for clearance. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then you want to go to the, the new Kipi right now? I wanted to go just go back to Kanto. Okay. Yeah. And then you, and then you want to come back to Kanto and then you train about here. This boat help you go to the the new Kipi right now. Okay. Okay. And then you can have me take your chicken fly. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Oops. Oh. On this one. So it's going to Canto. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> I don't know why, but I got. They asked me to leave that boat. I guess they're going somewhere else. And um. And they said, uh, I, with this boat. Oh boy. Or that tour guide. It's so loud. I can't think. Um. I got to put a life jacket on. They're very serious about that. So this is my new boat. I came to the back. It's a little bit quieter back here, but not by much. And uh, yeah, they just said, um, I don't know why, but they said this boat would be better for me than the one they put me on originally. Maybe maybe that's why the boat turned around. Then they uh, put me on this boat instead. So there's, so there's the market. And this is uh, this is my new boat, and the tour guide at the front. He's uh, still talking about something. Really interesting, like all these big river boats, barges, also going up and down, right in the middle of all these uh, tour boats. They all have to wind their way through each other. There goes a uh, tour boat. <laughs> what a scene. As I said uh, at the very beginning, I, I think I'd always enjoy doing everything at least two times. The first time you get the lay of the land, like reconnaissance, and then you can do it again, and then you can just relax and enjoy the experience because you know how everything works. So this was my reconnaissance trip, but I still enjoyed it very much. Very interesting. And there's the, uh, the main bridge up ahead that has the floating market sign on it. Because the original boat that I went on, they said it was going directly back to Kanto. So that's why they put me on it. But it was actually going further upriver. And then they turned around and brought me back and put me on this boat. So maybe there was a miscommunication about where I wanted to go.
such a variety of boats. Look at that woman there in the pink. At first I thought she was reading a book. I thought that was quite an interesting scene, but of course she's looking at her smartphone. Another boat there, another uh, tourist boat. Another uh, restaurant over there where the boats can pull up. A whole bunch of them. I wonder why all these ones are closed. Feels like there's uh, more than enough boats. Every one of these restaurants could have uh, customers, or maybe these aren't uh, restaurants. This uh, company, whatever that is, Huang Shua, they certainly uh, cornered the market in terms of advertising. They got a billboard on every one of these uh, riverside buildings. So we're going uh, underneath the bridge with the uh, sign on it again. Have a little bit of a race going on here. On this side <laughs> and over there. There it is. I'm noticing a bunch of these boats heading up uh, that tributary over there. Because I was wondering with the rest of the tour, the places that you go to, do you go there by boat or do you get off the boat and get on a bus? That's kind of what I didn't want to do, get on a bus and head off somewhere. I wanted to stay on the river, which is why I decided to just cut the tour short and go back. See if I can get a little bit of video near the front of the boat. our captain. Love the wheel. Very traditional wheel for a boat like this. back of the boat where some would argue that uh, this is where I belong right <laughs>
you have more of the feeling of being on a local ship, a local river boat rather than a tour boat, because you don't have all the, uh, the chairs and things like that. But yeah, there's the, uh, the rest of the boat and the big speaker for the tour guide. Luckily, the guide, he had something to say at the very beginning of the trip when we were leaving the market. But then I guess that was the end of the tour and he sat down. So now it's sort of um, blissfully quiet, except for the, uh, except for the um, uh, sound of the motor, the engine. So it's much better without the, the guide speaking for me. This is one of the bigger and newer bridges in Kanto. And uh, we're just uh, heading underneath it right now. I always end up thinking about the economics of these activities. I'd love to know how it all worked because as I, as I was telling the story at the very beginning, all the behind the scenes details, I just bought my ticket from some random guy that approached us late at night at the night market. He walked us over to a counter, wrote my name on a ticket stub, took my money and that's all I knew. But somehow that money went into a kind of a, a vast and somewhat complicated organization, a whole network of boats and, and tour companies. And money maybe changes hands at the other end because this boat went to that restaurant. So we brought them customers. So maybe they have to pay the tour company a little small commission to the dock at their restaurant. So all kinds of money is changing hands. The tour guides have to be paid. The boat captains have to be paid. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's very, very complicated how the money is distributed, how it's all organized. And, and you saw that when I got on the boat because I was brought, I don't know how many different places did I get brought to before I finally ended up on a boat. And I didn't have any papers with me. There was no paper trail. But um, I think I, I was the only uh, Westerner on one of these boats. So they kind of knew who I was. Okay, there's some, some, some guy from, uh, uh, from the West. And uh, they would just hand me off to another person, to another person, to another person. And I eventually ended up on a boat. But I'd love to know how all the money works. Yeah, I was, uh, I was really worried about the weather, and you can see why. Looking up there, all those uh, rain clouds. But that's one good thing about going so early in the morning. The weather is usually better earlier in the day rather than later. So it looks like the rain is moving in. There's another uh, barge, sand barge. So the poor guy's moving some of it with a shovel and a wheelbarrow. It's a lot of sand to move by wheelbarrow. Yeah, look at the edge of that rain cloud. I'm glad to be uh, heading back to shelter. There's a Vincom Plaza. The 
new wave of boats heading out to the market. And then a smaller one coming back. There's a different style of boat right there. Rounded uh, roof on top. Man, those rain clouds look very dark, very threatening. That's a nice boat, look at that. Luxury. There must be 20 or 30 different ways of going to the floating market. Different types of boats you can hire, different ticket levels you can buy, different tours you can go on. There's the other edge of the storm cloud. Well, not a cloud, a storm system moving in. And there's the uh, vehicle ferry that I talked about this morning, going back and forth, just heading across the river. Man. I was going to walk back to my hotel, but I think I may have to take a grab just to get there fast. Got to outrun this rain if I can. Yeah, we're almost back at the dock now. That's the original Cantu Market building right there. It's got a beautiful facade on the front. Well, I don't know if you call it a facade, but the, the front of the building with the original clock tower, classic French colonial style. And right here, this is where the, uh, the night market is and the walking street, things like that. Uh, so this this was an organized tour group. The guy at the front has a, a flag For his group and uh, They graciously let me uh, get on their boat, but they're all part of the same company as I said They're all uh, they're all connected Ooh, All right, we've docked And uh, some other boats are uh, just leaving right now just as the rain started but for a trip like this to be honest it doesn't really matter if it's raining when you go you're all, you always have a, a roof over your head going and coming back so it's not that big a deal it's actually more of a problem now that we're leaving the boat yeah you can see the rain just started gotta get out my umbrella Thank you. Oh, and there it is. There's the boat that I took back to on number 11. I have no idea what boat I went out on, but I think it was also a, a two on boat. 
and uh, these people coming back. Maybe this boat going out. I don't know. <laughs> so. Uh, it just delights me, all of the uh, ins and outs of an experience like this. And then when all the dust settles... Oh, what have we got here? Little, uh, little turtles. Wow, look at those little guys. I'm not sure what you do with them. Pets? My instinct was, oh, little pets you can take home, but they could be a delicacy. You eat them here, I'm not sure. Some kind of turtle soup. Yeah, everybody's uh, going straight to the shelter. And I'll do that as well while I get my umbrella out. Oh yeah, there's the... Uh, purple shirted uh, guides. They were on my first boat. And this is interesting because I think a lot of what was happening in terms of organizing the boats is because of this. So all of the boats, they have to register a passenger manifest. So you can't really just hop from one boat to the next you have to sort of get permission and then they have to clear it with the authorities. So when I asked them if I could just go back on a different boat, they arranged it for me, but they had to do it formally by making phone calls. And, and um, yeah, when I bought my ticket originally, I bought my ticket for Sunday morning, but I wasn't sure if I really wanted to go on Sunday morning, I thought maybe Monday, maybe, maybe Saturday, like a different day. So I did ask the guy, says, okay, I have this ticket, but if I decide to go tomorrow morning, like a day earlier, like, could I do that? And they says, well, it's complicated because we have to submit your name as a passenger on this particular boat at this time. And if you go on a different boat, we have to change your name to a different ship manifest through these guys here, maritime authorities, right? So, yeah, there's all that going on in the background as well that as a passenger you're not aware of. So it, it, it influences the things that happen, the illegality and the formalities. So, but yeah. Ah, pretty low-key rain. I was expecting a major storm to hit, but it's just drizzling, so maybe I'll, I'll start walking back, see what happens. And so, that's it. On my way back to my hotel now. Just drizzling. My, my umbrella can take care of that, no problem. So, uh, I don't know if that experience needs a verdict, but verdict. Planet Doug approved? Yeah, yeah absolutely Planet Doug approved. It was kind of a confusing, uh, frantic sort of experience. But that's largely because I just booked a random ticket without even knowing what it was and it wasn't uh, an English guided tour. So, you know, I had no idea what I'd signed up for or how any of it worked. So, so there's going to be a little bit of confusion the way it happens. And, uh, and as I said at the beginning, I had no expectations that it was going, that I was going to some kind of an actual market where real people are shopping. And, but to be honest, it was even more extreme than I expected. I thought there might still be remnants of an old market, but there wasn't really any at all. It was more, it was really not so much a floating market as a place where boats take you to have breakfast, basically. So like all the boats leave from here and then they all go to the same place and everybody has noodles and coffee and then the boats take them back again. So it's basically a boat cruise to go have breakfast. But that doesn't mean it's not worthwhile. It was actually very worthwhile. It was very enjoyable, interesting experience to see all the boats on the river. So yeah, Planet Doug approved. But I think uh, 
there's probably a better way of doing it than the way I did it if I had actually signed up for a tour that catered to English speakers it uh, it would have worked out better in a way I mean at least I have some clue what was going on <laughs> but hey it's fun sometimes to have no idea what is happening and you just go along with the flow so that is it my experience of the floating market and uh, as always I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video